hello and welcome follow subscribers and other racing fans today we have another episode of setup 101 uh, and a long uh, episode we will be tuning the Aston Martin Vantage V12 GT3 at uh, Shuhai um, my Chinese uh, friend he was just here and I told him I'll be racing at Zuhai uh, next week or, or in, in some days and he told me no it's Zuhai, Zuhai, something like that. I hope I pronunciated it correctly now. <sighs> well, so it's for an AOR race again. The AOR race will be in the night uh, with fog conditions. So. Very low track temperature, only 16 degrees Celsius. So you probably uh, can uh, learn um, setting up, or uh, can learn from the video setting up the car in low grip conditions like night and fog, for example. Also, I have the, um, I, I think the uh, track does not have too much grip on it so there is a combination of all conditions which makes it really really hard to get a uh, safe car here although the track is very easy from the layout but yeah in the night especially um, a problem finding your braking points as you can't really see much on the, on the track but yeah it's about the setup so what do we do here <coughs> We will be taking the Bugatti circuit setup as I have the feeling that this setup could be uh, useful on this track as well. I'm not sure, maybe it's just a, um, a false thought because the layouts seem to be a little bit similar um, but do not have too much in common. Uh, after that but we will see we will take the uh, um, Circu the Bugatti setup um, I made a setup 101 for that as well so if you haven't seen that you might want to have a look at this first to understand the settings we already have in the car I already changed something let me think about ah yeah I reduced the tire pressures to 1.8 and yeah, I think that pretty much was it for the time being. Oh yeah, and the right heights for a uh, Bugatti, I increased them by one or two millimeters uh, because it was a very bumpy track there. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I think that's it for now let's just drive on uh, or go out on the track and drive some laps and then we will see what we can do to improve the setup further okay I haven't driven a really good lap uh, on it so far uh, just simply because the braking points are ridiculous I can't find them at all. <laughs> um, I now try to use the uh, brake markers on the left side of the road. See if that helps. One thing I notice in the fast corners. Um, I can't get the car around very nicely so probably uh, much too much rear downforce at the moment I have to decrease that as a first step oops breaks a little cold but at the moment yeah but as you can see the layout of the track is really really easy <coughs> Breaking much too early there. <coughs> I 
first thing we will do is reducing the rear downforce. Oops, yeah, definitely. <coughs> By a big amount, I would say. And we are also... Oh god damn it. That was not good. And we will also uh, definitely make the suspensions stiffer and give it a little bit more um, sway bars. That's the word. Okay. Let's first reduce the tire pressures further. 1.7. Tire temps at the moment at 80 degrees Celsius. I hope we can increase that a little bit with um, with our increased um, suspension stiffness. Uh, brake balance. I'm not sure about that. Let's change that on the fly later on. <coughs> I will go down point 3.0 in the rear. I think it's a it's a low downforce track, definitely. We don't need much downforce here. Or do we? I'm not even sure. Ah, we can try both. It's no problem. First we have to find some speed though. Um, that looks nice, everything. Although I will reduce the toe in angle by a point 0.2 there. As I have the feeling that the car induced quite some understeer. I think also at Bugatti I reduced the rear springs more than the front springs. Is that possible? I'm not even sure at the moment. Let's just try this one here. Or was it 170 on default? Ah, doesn't matter. Let's try it with 190. Also, we will go with 30 and 25 sway bars, which is kind of the uh, standard setting I use on tracks where you don't really have bumps. Uh, increase the uh, corner speeds with higher values at, at this point. That's the same thing we do with the spring rates. We increase the uh, corner speeds and also um, the reactiveness reactiveness of the car. car is much more reactive with um, stiffer springs. Also more load on the tires, um, hotter tires and we do need hotter tires on this track. Okay, lowest right height as always, more corner speed you know and better handling overall. Uh, we don't need the bump stops here, I think, so we reduce them to 5 millimeters. Probably fast bumps, I think I reduced them more in the rear for Suku Bugatti. But yeah, that should be okay. I will definitely reduce the acceleration lock a little bit further as the rear came around on throttle a bit too much for me. And of course it was understeering as I told you uh, when being on, uh, at certain speeds. Uh, let's just try 0 and 2, let's see. Yeah, At this point you see it's just fiddling around find the perfect settings as this course is not driven very often it's hard to find definite answers okay over those bumps the rear is quite unstable but much better here now oh yeah I forgot that I have cold brakes. 
I really hate that. The tires are pre-warmed, but the brakes are not. That doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, it, it makes sense, but of course, it's like that in real life as well. <coughs> but it's awful. Oh yeah, much better. Car is much more reactive through those corners. Much better to drive. Bring too early for this corner though. Not sure if this is fourth or third gear. Looks like third gear. Else it's understeering too much. And now the breaking point into the first corner is awful. And into this corner as well. Looks like a noob driving, but yeah, let me tell you, it's really, really hard. I think I have to turn in later for that corner. The rear is now a bit too unstable for my taste. I think I have to reduce the rear sway bars. But at the same time, I will probably reduce the rear downforce even further. Bring too late again. It looks like there are many overtaking opportunities here. Just because corners are so easy to drive that you have several lines through them. Yeah, it's better to miss that curb. Tires in the rear are now on temp. But in the front they are not. That tells me that the balance of the car is a bit off. I think you can take this corner much faster than I did. And braking too late again. Brakes are 
pretty much overheating. Or they are on, on point, I would say. <coughs> Good. So we do have too much oversteering in the uh, slow corners and too much understeering in the fast corners. So what do we do? We reduce the rear downforce again and then we increase the toe in angle again. We also reduce the spring rate in the rear and the sway bars in the rear and hope that this will help <clears throat> hard to get the fronts on on uh, on temperature here I mean the fronts are not that important to be honest but well, they're still important let's reduce it to 165 or just let's reduce it to 160 let's go extreme first so we uh, save some uh, some time okay uh, brake balance 61 was much too much, I think I will go down to 59 for this track. Now let's go out again. Okay, that bump is nasty, but doesn't feel too bad. On the throttle. Mm-hmm was definitely a step in the right direction, I have to say. figure out if this is a second gear or a first gear corner. Okay. I now slid around a bit too much there, I guess because the rear downforce is too less. Tires now get on temp. Oh shit, I missed the corner. Cross seem to have <laughs> more grip than the road. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's definitely two less um, downforce in the rear now. I will go back to zero and two for, for starters. Also reduce the steering ratio a bit. <coughs> As I have the feeling in the slow corners, I don't really get around the apexes as nicely as I would like. Mm, caster, I think I reduced the caster to the minimum for this track. Or oh, you know what? Yeah, reduce it to the minimum. Um, that makes the car more reactive and I kind of have the feeling that I need that. Many slow corners there. And the springs. Maybe we can go even um, stiffer. <coughs> Let's try that. And let's reduce the bump stops completely. I don't have the feeling we, we need them. I mean, with bump stops on a bumpy road, you get uh, less problems with uh, buttoning out. But we only have the first corner where we are buttoning out. And I think there is a line where we can go around uh, those stupid little bumps in the road. I will also reduce the uh, acceleration lock. But, okay, let's increase the uh, the preload though, so the car reacts faster on, an on and off throttle, but is more calm on throttle. Okay. So that's it for the moment, let's try it out again. Quite extreme setup here. Okay, shouldn't go on the cross there. I think the changes were good. Car goes around the corner is more comfortable now. Oops. Still breaking too early for this corner. But yeah, it feels much better on the throttle now. Let's drive another lap. I think I should try second gear there. Or maybe short shifting in general is a good idea under these conditions.
Okay, there's a, a short lift I need to do to get into this corner. Too late on the brakes. Ugh, come on. Yeah, the thing is, we have uh, much horsepower here, 530 again. So the car is naturally a little bit more twitchy. Last races were all um, at certain heights above sea level. So we didn't have our full power and the car uh, this time it's much better especially if you think about the Bentleys with their turbos oh come on uh, you can't really see the brake markers on the left because you can't read them, which is a problem. But I would say I go to zero and three downforce. I think that will help. Everything else pretty much feels spot on at the moment, I have to say. Don't have many complaints. I'll probably increase the front swaver a little bit further and reduce the rear a little bit. Because the balance of the car is still not right in the low speed corners. In the high speed corners, I think with 0 and 3 we are pretty safe. But on a low speed, don't want to reduce the spring rates in the rear even more, but we, we could also do that. But let's see, maybe the sway bar adjustment already helped. Well, let's reduce the preload again. Yeah, I think that's the right decision. And we are almost done, guys. We are almost done. I think I got the force feedback bug. Yeah. So let's go back to the pits and drive out again. I guess this time I will give you the live telemetry so you can see what is happening with the champs and the other stuff. It 
Celsius again. Break temps. When you see 200 degrees Celsius, that's that's not enough for them to work correctly. And I do it again. That comes from the from the torquing, I think. Concentration concentration lacking quite much. Oh yeah, I think the car feels better. It's turning in very nicely. It's not oversteering on the low speed corners. Yeah, also feels quite nicely now. In the last corner. I think that's it. That's our setup. Yes. Definitely. That that feels right. Those small sway bar adjustments, I think. Ooh, ooh. On the dirt. Those small, small sway bar adjustments, I think those were the adjustments that uh, saved the setup here at this point. early braking again I see the tire temps are really nice now as well you always want them to have 90 degrees that's that's perfect I have the feeling from 100 degrees Celsius and above they are going down in crib Ninety is so pretty much the sweet spot. Right front is maybe a bit cold, so might reduce the tired pressures there a little bit. Also keep in mind, if you're driving in hotter conditions during the day, you need of course higher tire pressures. And maybe the car gets a little bit over theory, uh, under theory. When there is more crib available. Oh, you really can't be too late for this corner. Else it will kill you. However, that's good for the moment. I'm quite happy with that. So, let's go through the setup changes we have done for uh, the uh, uh, Shuhai track. Remember, um, we took the uh, Suku the Bugatti as um, the base for this setup. Obviously, the tire pressures going down so much. Um, 1.6 in the front, I think I've never used less than that. 
it's uh, it's pretty much the lowest possible values. 1.5 is the lowest possible value. Maybe we use 1.55 in the front right. Can try that. Well, else brake balance. I think we don't need uh, too much front balance here on this track but I might uh, variate this uh, during the race as I need it on the fly. Using the same brake ducts as in the French circuit and Le Mans circuit. So yeah, it's r when I have to brake uh, very often and this is uh, quite a tiny track from uh, the straights then you also need quite high brake ducts in the S and at least that's for me. I know um, my teammate Massa he's uh, braking far less than me and he doesn't have too many problems with that but yeah I think 90% is okay in this case. We're using 0 and 3 downforce, 0 and 5 in the Bugatti circuit because I always had the problem with braking into the fast uh, in, into the fast corners that the rear were, was going around. That's not the case here. Um, zero and three much better because you don't have to lift through the corners except the last corner. Uh, but there you have to brake. So that's um, much slower than uh, you would need it. Okay. Uh, didn't change anything here except for the caster which was 6.4 for Bugatti and we reduced it even further. That's uh, to get around the small corners, uh, the tight corners better. I have to say um, generally it says, well what, do, what does it say? Mm, a greater angle gets a straight line and a small a straight line stability and a smaller angle um, a quicker reaction to steering in general it feels like a smaller angle induces some oversteer and a greater induces some understeer during turn in so if you have many many tight corners you want to use a smaller angle so you get a better turn in into them. If you have uh, fast, only fast and uh, smooth corners like in Spa, you want to have a greater angle. Yeah. Lowest rider, no change and Bugatti I only increased it by one or two millimeters uh, because of the bumps there. Uh, but however, we increased uh, the stiffness of the springs which helps to maintain the tire temperatures. Um, if you are driving on this track uh, during the day you might want to uh, soften them again by one or two clicks but for the night it's definitely a good idea to increase them as well as the sway bars. Same reason we also use the uh, sway bars um, to adjust the balance of the car which is which was too oversteery on the throttle, on exit of the corners. So using more front sway bar and less rear sway bar to make the car more balanced in this regard. I didn't touch the bumps at all. So same as in Bugatti. If you want to have a look there to learn why and how we changed it, uh, watch this video. Yeah. Also for corner exits, I decreased the acceleration lock uh, to zero percent. Last time I did this was at Imola during the rain race. Yeah, it really helps to keep the car on track. But also I think there is some traction lost because the wheel, s uh, which has um, which has less weight on it. Um, might get some wheel spin but yeah I think it's better to have uh, less oversteering on the corner exits on throttle um, than if you have if you lose some some traction 
it definitely helped me here. So, I think that's pretty much it. Final drive, you don't need the, uh, the taller um, final drive because it's just um, not worth it. The straights are too short, so there's no problem. Uh, didn't change anything here as well. Everything stayed as we had it in Bugatti. So we are through with this setup 101. I hope you learned something. That's the reason I'm doing that. And I know some of you prefer the shorter versions where I just say uh, what you need to change or what I, what, what I did change and what helped and what not. But I also know some of you um, enjoy the longer versions where I just go uh, into a trial and error run and seek the best setup for myself. This is what I did today. So, as I said, hope you enjoyed. See you next time and bye bye.